Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I'm going to show you something that you might think you need JavaScript for, but you can do with just pure CSS. Maybe you've got an e-commerce store, and you're selling things that are only white, and you come in here, and you got this little icon. Well, you can hover over it and actually show your own little custom message using a data attribute and selecting that in CSS. All right, a short video today. Let's jump right in. So I've got the HTML pulled up over here, and you'll notice that I've got little buttons here with uh, this SVG icon of like this little info icon here. And inside here, I have a custom attribute, which you can do by just adding data dash and then adding whatever name you want. So data dash, dash message is what I've got here. And I've got random text for each of these. Now we can select this data attribute directly in the CSS and then populate a little pop-up um, whenever we hover or focus over it. All right, let's jump into the CSS now. And uh, I've got everything styled except for our data attribute. And you, you can select the attribute just by typing those brackets and then doing data dash message or whatever it happens to be. Now here we can do like position relative or whatever we want. And it isn't going to do a whole lot because we actually have to get that text from the data message. So let's come in here. And this time we're going to say we want the data message. And we want it whenever we focus. And what we want to do is a, add that data message, whenever we focus on the data message, we want to add that text of the data message to the before pseudo element. I'm actually going to come in here and not only grab the focus state, but also grab the hover state. And what we can do is say content. And normally you'd say like, hi, or whatever, you know, you you actually put the text in here. Well, you can select that with something in uh, CSS called ATTR attribute. And then you actually just add data message in here. And it'll grab the text of the data message attribute directly in your CSS here. And now if I save this, you'll notice that we can't quite see it yet because we have to actually hover over this. So if I come in here and hover, you see it pulls up right like that, which is pretty cool. In fact, just to make this a little easier, let's go ahead and cut this out for now. And then I'm going to just change this to instead of focus, we'll just do before so you can see it kind of live. And then we'll add back in um, the actual hover state there. So there we go. We've got it actually showing up. You'll notice that it pulls it for each of them dynamically, which is really cool. Again, you don't have to use JavaScript for this. Now, because we added a relative position to the actual data message, we can now come in here and say position of absolute. And then we'll say width 100 to make it as, you know, as wide as that area. Uh, but it'll be basically as wide as the button is itself. So we actually are going to want to put a min width on this of like 200 pixels, something like that. And then let's add a padding of one rem. And let's do a background color of white. Now, right now, because I've got an opacity on the whole card, I have to actually come in here and hover to pull that up to full opacity. Now let's position this where we want it. So we'll say left of 50%. And you'll see what that does is it places at 50% of the parent container, which is that little icon. So we're going to actually want to transform this. So we'll say transform translate, and then we'll go 50% to the left. So this is the X, X direction. And if I save it, you'll see it pulls over that way. And then let's actually move it up 100%. So it's up right above where it needs to be. Now to give us a little more space, let's go in here and come up here with like a negative one rem at top. So it pulls up just a bit. Now when we come over here and we hover, it'll pull up just like that. Now we could be done, but I want to show you one other kind of cool thing. It's a little bit of a hack that you can do in CSS. So we'll come in here and grab the exact same thing, data message. And we're going to grab just the before right now. And what I want to do is add a little arrow that points down. And you can add this again just in CSS. So I'll come in here, and for this one, I don't want any content. And I want it to be position of absolute. And then we'll do a top of like negative 18 pixels to make sure it gets high enough uh, up into this upper card area. And I just realized I want this to be after, not before, because I've already used the before uh, pseudo element up above. Again, we're going to do left of 50%. And then we'll do a transform, translate. This time, let's just do X because all we're worried about right now is just that X uh, coordinate and it'll be moved over directly here. Now we haven't done anything yet, so you might be wondering what in the world's going on. We've got this after pseudo element just kind of waiting right here, but nothing yet populating it. Well, we can create a little arrow uh, by ourselves by just doing a border. So we'll do a border top of 15 pixels solid 
uh, white. Now, at first, that doesn't seem like it does anything, but then we can put a left and a right border, same width, same height, except what we can do is make it transparent. So let me come in here, and we'll say our left, and here we'll say our right, and then we'll change this to transparent, and we'll do the same thing up above, transparent, and now when we save it, you'll see we've actually got a little arrow pointing down. So we've got a left border that's transparent, a right border that's transparent, and this top one that's the same width and is white. And you can make these little kind of uh, cool drop downs like that. And you'll see because we translated it over 50% um, and we have it positioned to its parent element 50%, it's directly right over that just like we'd want it to be. So now let me come back in here and let's paste back in this. This is going to be after. And let's come back up here and do the same thing. And now it's hidden until I hover, and then it pops up just like that. Again, all of this is done with just CSS, no JavaScript required. Well, hopefully that was a fun little tutorial. You learned a couple of new things. And uh, thanks so much for joining me. If you like this kind of thing, please subscribe, hit the like button, and let me know what you'd like me to do next in the comments. And I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.